LSU and its defense is completely wasting one of the best years of quarterback play the Tigers have ever have ever had. They're wasting a Jaden Daniels Heisman campaign right now. He's putting up numbers. He's running this offense as efficiently and as well as Joe Burrow was a couple years ago. And I feel very comfortable making a comparison between Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels. This guy is lighting every defense he's seeing completely up. And that's spreading to everybody else on this offense. But here's the problem. The offense is the only unit on this team that has any kind of juice, any kind of charisma. And, well, the scoreboard is showing that because week after week, sans Mississippi State with a quarterback that may as well be in a wheelchair and Grambling State, a team that plays in the FCS, this defense has looked awful and it does, doesn't even look like they even care. It doesn't look like as they're getting just gashed play after play, drive after drive, they want to do anything about it. And it's obvious. I I'm right there down there on the sideline watching LSU play these games. I was there at Ole Miss. And this offense was fired up all game, especially in the second half. They come out of the locker room, down three points. They score on that first possession. They punch the ball in with physical runs. And they walk to the back of the end zone, fist pumping each other, banging helmets Charles Turner the center on this offensive line is running off the field as if he just won the lottery like that's how much it means to this offense they know that each guy is putting forth their full effort in each and every play and eventually that shows up with the on-field success and you look up at the scoreboard that's where you really see that success so the offense is great. I got no complaints with them. How can you have complaints with this unit and, and with this group right now? Jaden Daniels, another excellent game. 27 of 36, 414 yards, four touchdowns passing. I mean, maybe last year you would have thought he would get four touchdowns total between running and passing. No, he had four passing, and three of those at least were to three different receivers. Kyron Lacey. Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors got involved a bunch as well. I don't think he cracked the end zone. It was Thomas and Lacey, but still, he's spreading the rock around to a lot of different guys, and that says a lot about who he is as a quarterback. It means he trusts his receivers, and he's throwing balls that can be caught by pretty much anybody. That's elite right there. This guy is at the top of the boards for pretty much any offensive quarterbacking statistic. Quarterback rating, he's top five. Passing yards, he's top three. Scoring for touchdowns, both passing, running, whatever that he's accounted for, also top three. And not to mention, he's electric with his legs. I told you to watch out for that with this game. He brought it 15 carries for 99 yards and a touchdown. Ole Miss could not stop this guy. Defenses all year will struggle to stop this guy. LSU will have a top three at bare minimum offense in the SEC this year. They'll definitely be top 10 in the country the way they're producing right now as long as they can stay healthy. As I said, they, they spread it around again to different people. It's not the Malik Neighbors show. Now, Brian Thomas, he is confirmed him. He has been so good this season, and he was the lead receiver in this game against Ole Miss. He had a one-on-one -on -one matchup several different times, and he came down with the football in contested situations for touchdowns. They, they couldn't cover him. They couldn't cover neighbors. Like, other defenses have problems with this LSU offense. And frankly, this offense will need to lead this team in every single game this year because clearly the defense is a non-factor. Every game expected to be a shootout. LSU's got to put up at least 40 if this team wants to win 8, 9, 10 games. But what happens when you run into a team that has a good defense, like in Alabama, like in Texas A&M, and your offense maybe struggles a little bit, maybe puts up 25 or 30? You got some issues, and we're going to get into that. We got a film review coming up about this defense and things of that nature, but this offense is really good, and it's all because of Jaden Daniels. He's a great leader. Another thing I'll get into on the defensive side – Who's the leader of the defense? I don't know. Who's the leader on the offensive side? You could say Will Campbell. You could say Emory Jones. You could say Malik Neighbors. You could say Jaden Daniels. There's so many guys that just take responsibility. And that's why this unit is so good. And Daniels himself, you know, the one gripe you might have with him is he's got to get down. He's got to slide. He's got to avoid inviting that contact. But you can't rattle this guy. You might rattle his helmet. You're not going to rattle his brain, though. This guy is so mentally tough. I don't know that I've ever come across a football player that is just as stagnant as Jaden Daniels is. Like, he doesn't react to anything. 
You hit him, you light him up, he fumbles, fine. He comes right back out the next possession and leads the offense to a touchdown. Like, it's unbelievable. So, it's really frustrating that week after week, this guy is producing, capital P, producing, and the defense is wasting it. And this is going to be all year. Go on ESPN right now in a world where LSU is 5-0. They beat Florida State. Or even they're 4-1. They lose to Florida State. Everybody's talking about Jaden Daniels. Nobody's talking about Caleb Williams. Jaden Daniels would be the Heisman frontrunner right now if this defense was any better. And it's a darn shame because this is going to go down when it's all said and done as one of the best quarterbacking seasons by an LSU signal caller ever right next to Joe Burrow.